Okay, so there's been a huge update in the Alec Baldwin Rust trial. Hannah Gutierrez read the weapons handler who loaded the firearm for Alec Baldwin has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. The 26 year old now faces up to 18 months in jail and she will be sentenced at a later date. Hannah was found not guilty of that second charge, tampering with evidence during the 2021 incident of Helena Hutchinson's death. Jurors deliberated for three hours before returning the verdict. When it was finally read out loud, Hannah's face stayed expressionless as she was contemplating the sentence. While she was being led away by two officers, she leaned over and told her mother who was crying, it'll be okay. The parents and sister of Helena said that they were satisfied with the verdict. They released a statement saying, we look forward to the justice system continuing to make sure that everyone else who is responsible for Helena's death is required to face the legal consequences for their actions. It means that someone has been held legally, criminally culpable for the death of Helena. Hutchins. Prosecutors said Hannah failed to ensure the weapon was only loaded with dummy rounds, which are fake ones used on movie sets to look like real ones. They said that she was negligent, careless, and thoughtless when she failed to notice that live bullets were mixed with dummy rounds in a box of ammunition on set. And of course, one of the real ones was actually in the weapon that would be eventually used by Alec Baldwin. Prosecutors also presented evidence that Gutierrez Reed had brought a box of live rounds to the New Mexico film set from her house. Apparently, these real bullets slowly spread throughout the set over the course of the 12 days. And so by that point, you could no longer tell which ones were real and which ones were fake, which was obviously the biggest recipe for disaster. The prosecutor said that Hannah was more worried about her career and less about the victims in the aftermath of the incident. She did not end up testifying in that two week trial, but her lawyer said in a closing argument that prosecutors failed to prove his client was a sole person responsible. He actually shifted the blame, of course, to Alec Baldwin and argued that he had gone off script when he pointed the weapon at the film crew, which was something that Hannah had no idea that he was going to do. The trial witnesses included the film's director, Joel Souza, who had to be flown to the hospital but ended up surviving after the incident. Souza said he remembered looking up at Hannah after he was hit in the shoulder, and she kept on saying, I'm sorry, Joel. The jury was also shown emotional and distressing footage of the aftermath when the revolver held by Alec went off. It included a video that appeared to show Helena's final moments, with paramedics frantically trying to save her life. Last year, it seemed as though Alec was actually going to be in the clear. The manslaughter charges against him got dropped less than two weeks before a trial was set to begin. At the time, prosecutors explained that new facts were revealed in the case, which required further investigation. But they insisted that this decision did not absolve Alec of criminal culpability and that the original charges might still be refiled, which we obviously know ended up happening. Although back then, it really seemed like he was off the hook, which got a whole lot of people upset. His attorney, Luke Nikus, released a statement saying, we are pleased with the decision to dismiss the case against Alec Baldwin, and we encourage a proper investigation into the facts and circumstances of this tragic accident. So what happened? Well, prosecutors learned that the firearm had been modified with a new trigger in a way that could have made a misfire more likely. This was a really interesting development given that Alec had adamantly denied even pulling the trigger, even though an FBI report later concluded that it could not have been fired without that happening. At the time, his attorney insisted that he had no reason to believe that there was any ammunition inside of it or anywhere else on the movie set. In a statement of their own, they said, the new special prosecutor team has taken a very diligent and thorough approach to the entire investigation, which we welcome and have always welcomed. They are seeking the truth and we are also. The truth about what happened will come out and the questions that we have long sought answers for will be answered. This news brought about mixed reactions across the internet. Some some people straight up said that Alec got away with it just because he was a rich, white Hollywood celebrity. Others say that he should have never been charged in the first place because he's innocent. One person tweeted at the time, I don't know if it was an accident, but I feel like the only reason he was let off is because he's Alec Baldwin. Maybe don't arrest him, but there should have definitely been consequences. He's rich and he can handle it. So many more people criticized the decision as letting him off easy. There were even accusations that he must have paid someone off to have these charges dropped. Someone else wrote, an innocent woman died and absolutely nothing is happening. They could at least cancel the movie out of respect for her. Hollywood was also divided over whether or not Alec deserved the charges. Piers Morgan was one of the first public figures to respond to the news and he appeared to agree with the ruling. He brought up the verdict on Piers Morgan Uncensored and said, there was no doubt that it was an accident, but Helena Hutchins died, leaving behind a grief stricken husband, a young child, and the person holding the firearm that fired the bullet and killed her was Alec Baldwin. 
Baldwin. He went on to say it was him who did that, who fired into his co-worker's body and snuffed out her life. No one else's hands were anywhere near the weapon. The 57 year old described Alec as the epitome of Hollywood arrogance and accused him of embarking on a woeful self-pitying PR tour that felt cynically designed to make people think that he was a victim. Pierce brought up Alec's 2021 interview with ABC News where he said, I feel that someone is responsible for what happened and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me. He pointed to this as evidence that the actor does not feel guilt at all over the incident. Quote, he's repeatedly spewed indignant denial of responsibility to his millions of followers on social media and in a succession of television interviews. To make matters worse, Alec actually ended up keeping his role in Rust, which restarted production several months ago. Helena's husband, Matt, remained as the film's executive producer, which is a role that he took on as a part of the wrongful death lawsuit. The director, Joel Souza, also returned, even though he was one of the two people who was actually injured in that incident. Melina Spadoni, a Tony for Rust movie productions, said that as the film proceeds, production would include on-set safety supervisors and union crew members as they will bar any use of working weapons or any ammunition. So yeah, you would hope they would do that. One of the craziest moments of this case was when it came out that Alec had actually missed firearm training before filming the movie. Court documents claim that he failed to attend a session on handling these weapons before filming officially started. After that, a private hour-long session was scheduled for him, but it only ended up being 30 minutes in length because apparently he was talking on the phone the whole time. In fact, Hannah stated in her deposition that Alec had limited training in firearms and how to check his own firearm as to whether it was unloaded or loaded. She wrote, while he did attend a 30 minute training session on set, he appeared distracted. It later came out that Hannah should have never been hired in the first place. She was inexperienced and unqualified to be working with so many firearms and she failed to demand the minimum safety standards on set. One of the main reasons prosecutors came so much after Alec was because he was not just an actor in the movie, but he was also the producer. So he was literally responsible for the fact that Hannah got hired. They also argued that he should have been around firearms long enough to know better. Despite his public assertions that he is an expert when it comes to firearms and filmmaking, photos and videos from the day of the incident showed Alec mishandling the weapon. In fact, investigators counted at least 40 instances of him previously using a weapon in film or TV productions throughout his career. The filing also accused Alec for not behaving like it could have been loaded. They stated Baldwin directly pointed a firearm at Hutchins and Sousa. He knew the first rule of firearm safety is never to point it at someone you don't intend on hitting. In addition, always assume that it is loaded. Had Baldwin performed the required safety checks with the armorer, this tragedy would not have occurred. But all things considered, no one got away from this incident unscathed, including Alec Baldwin. This case has surrounded him for more than two years now, and it's not surprising that it ended up deeply affecting his mental health and even his own marriage. Alec is notorious for having a short fuse. And this was on full display when he gave a tense interview to the press about the incident in October of 2021. At this time, his wife Hilaria was also present to experience his temper and it was total chaos. Alec and Hilaria stopped on the side of the road and they gave a surprise interview to the photographers who were tailing their car. The couple were both clearly aggravated with one reporter who could not even remember Helena's name. Alec said, you don't know her name, come on. But many people pointed out the fact that he seemed to be more irritated with his wife than with the reporters. She was filming the whole thing on her phone and she approached him with her camera in her hand. Then he shot her an irritated look and said, excuse me. Then when Hilaria tried to respond to one of the questions and said, I brought him up here because we have to mourn Helena's death. Alec had a really traumatic thing happen and I'm trying to limit the PTSD. Then her husband snapped at her and said, do me a favor, I'm going to answer the question. To be fair, at the time of this interview, both of them looked extremely stressed out and it's likely that they were feeling the pressure of all the sudden media attention. They both got a lot of criticism for the way they behaved in the months following the tragedy and it really all came out in that video. And things haven't gotten any easier for Alex since. He once again made headlines in April of 2022 when his daughter Ireland and her mother aka his ex-wife Kim Bassinger opened up on the Red Table Talk about the challenges that they faced dealing with him over the years. Although the women tried to put a positive spin on it, that interview painted a pretty clear picture of the way that they viewed life with Alec. Kim said, you know, we're all fine, we all get along, whatever, but he's a challenge. We've had our challenges. While discussing Ireland's battle with mental health, she says, I don't think Alec was emotionally or mentally available for that kind of talk. Alec operates in a very different way in his life. Ireland then turned to Jada Pinkett Smith and explained that she thinks her father suffers from anxiety. She said, he's someone who grew up in a family that would suppress any anxiety or tell him that he's weak for feeling that 
that way. She went on to say, there's things that I would go to my father for, but if I ever try to have this mental health conversation with him in any way, I don't think he would be able to really absorb any of it. So it's obviously very sad that the two of them aren't able to connect with him on that level. But it's easy to see why Alec wouldn't be too happy with them discussing his mental health on TV, especially after the year that he'd had. So what do you guys think about the upcoming trial and everything that's been going on with it? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you all in the next video.